Coming up on Mountain News this morning, a new class is created for people in our region who lost their homes to floodwaters but still want to cook some homemade meals. And the state government sends a letter to our nation's capital asking for more help as we continue on the long road to recovery. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, the time is 4.59. I'm Keaton Hall. Let's throw it over to Brandon Robinson for our very first look at the weather. Well, the forecast this morning, Keaton, a little bit of fog out there across parts of the region and the St uh, Storm Prediction Center. The National Weather Service has issued an alert, basically a special weather statement saying, hey, it's foggy out there, so be careful this morning. Let's take a look at that visibility as we head to the first part of your day, and you can see it's pretty low in a lot of areas there. One or zero visibility, uh, one mile or zero visibility this morning. So again, we're keeping an eye on that for you, and we'll keep you posted. Temperatures a little closer to where they have been in the low 50s over in southwest Virginia, 50 in Clintwood and Jonesville, and 59 at Jackson, 60 at Ashland's our warm spots this morning. A lot of low to mid 50s, so a little extra coffee as you head out the door this morning, but over Overall, another fantastic day, and it's a big day here in Hazard as the Black Gold Festival officially gets underway a little bit later on. We'll have the forecast for that and much more coming up here in just a little bit. Keep. Thanks, Brandon. One Floyd County family is hoping to see their home back together soon, spending more than one month only sheltered by plastic and metal. WYMT's Buddy Forbes shares the hunter's hunt for home. Cooking out here would be pretty difficult to do. I got electric out here, but you try to cook, take too much juice, it'll kick the breaker out there. For nearly 50 days, the hunters have parked their entire lives under a carport. At least we got something, the cover is for Marine. Yeah. After their community was hit by the late July floods, Sherry and Jerry were forced to pack up whatever they could save. The clothes are over here. We worked until the flood got up to our knees and we all went out and climbed the ladder and went up to the roof and stayed up there until the flood and went down. Much of their house and neighborhood destroyed. The mud and nasty water, it's horrible. Leaving them to shelter in a makeshift home as summer fades to fall. He puts down the plastics and he keeps some of the cold out. We got a little opening back here. It gets a little bit chilly right now weather and we just added another quilt to the bed. So Christian Appalachian Project stepped in. You doing okay? Oh yeah. You know, CAP's mission statement is building hope, transforming lives and sharing Christ's love through service in Appalachia. And um, if we could do anything here, uh, just knowing that um, there is hope. Rebuilding, remodeling, and allowing the hunters to reclaim something the waters couldn't take away. We want to have our home back. That means everything. In Floyd County, Buddy Forbes, WYMT Mountain News. The home repairs are expected to be complete in a little more than one week. The hunters say they would be working on the project for at least one year without this help from CAP. A new cooking class is being taught at campgrounds around Knott County. Lori Adams with Knott County Extension Office started a creative cooking class series on Wednesday. The class was created to teach people who lost their home and are living in campers or tents creative ways to eat healthy and cook. They don't have the best kind of circumstances to cook in, and so I wanted to um, focus on food safety. Adams also taught the people in the class how to make a healthy salsa. If you missed out, missed out yesterday, there will be another class today at Camp Fork Campground at 1 p.m. Anyone is welcome to join. If you still have not applied for FEMA assistance, the registration for aid closes in just less than two weeks. September 28th is the final day to apply for aid from FEMA. Nate Custer says officials are trying to reach as many people as possible to help with funding. He says even though the application for aid closes on the 28th, they will not be going anywhere until everyone who has applied receives help. We're here for the long run. We're not here until uh just two weeks from now and all of a sudden we're going to pull up and leave the day that registration ends. And we've got all these uh, all these cases to follow through on. It's a very complex, involved recovery. It's going to go on for uh, for many months. If you've registered for FEMA assistance already and are still waiting for a response or need extra information, 
You can call FEMA using the number you see on your screen. Kentucky's congressional delegation is asking the federal government to share the cost for flood relief in eastern Kentucky. The delegation sent a letter to President Joe Biden asking for more help in hard hit counties. Lawmakers say the counties impacted were already facing limited resources before the flood and the damage to the area's economy and infrastructure only made things worse. The letter is also in support of Governor Andy Beshear's request to modify the major disaster declaration, asking for a 90% federal cost share. On Wednesday, Governor Andy Beshear and First Lady Brittany Beshear got the updated COVID-19 vaccine. The bivalent booster, as it's called, is the first updated COVID-19 booster recommended by the CDC. It targets the BA4 and BA5 Omicron subvariants. Kentucky River District Public Health Director Scott Lockard recommends the booster to anyone who can get it. So this is a, a, an improved vaccine and it's recommended that everyone who is eligible to receive the vaccine uh, get this new bivalent booster. Lockhart says if you've had your primary series of vaccines and it's been more than two months since you received a booster, then you're most likely eligible for the new booster. An invasive insect from Asia is now in the United States and could, could soon make its way to, into Kentucky. The spotted, spotted lanternfly started its U.S. invasion in Pennsylvania. However, it was recently found three miles from the Kentucky-Indiana border. Scientists say the insects are bad for U.S. farms and forests. One of the side effects of their feeding is that they create what's called honeydew. It's a sugary fecal material and it rains down on people that are underneath trees that are infested. Experts say if you find the spotted, spotted lantern fly in your backyard, take a picture of it, report it, and then kill it. Thanks for getting your day started with us here on Mountain News this morning. Coming up next, it seems like severe weather is causing even more power outages as the need for power grows around the world. We'll have more on that in just a few minutes. But here at home, it is a rinse and repeat forecast without the rinse part today. I'll have the latest for you in about three minutes.